Good day grade 11s. Welcome to week 9. In this week we're going to be learning about intermolecular forces. So first of all we need to distinguish between intramolecular bonds and intermolecular forces. Intramolecular bonds you've learnt about already. They are the bonds within the molecule. They are what makes molecules actually bond. Two atoms bond to become a molecule or two or more actually. And we've spoken about them already and you'll recognize them when I say these words. Covalent, ionic and metallic. So we've spoken about covalent bonding, ionic bonding and metallic bonding which is your C of D localized electrons. So you guys should know this but now we're talking about intermolecular forces. And intermolecular forces are the forces which occur between the molecules. Okay, they are much weaker and they occur over greater distances than the intramolecular bonds. And please note the difference here where this is called a bond okay and this is called a force and that's important because this is actually a bond where there's a sharing of electrons and this is just, re just really an attractive force between our molecules. Okay, so now let's talk more about our intermolecular forces. There are two types of intermolecular forces. First you get forces between ions and dipoles. Now what is an ion? An ion is an atom that is either gained or lost an electron. Okay, if it's gained an electron it's going to be a negative ion, in other words it's going to be an anion, and if it has lost an electron it becomes a positive ion and it's called a cation. So a positive ion is called a cation and a negative ion is called an anion. Okay, so that's the one type of intermolecular force between ions and molecules. The second type of intermolecular force is forces between molecules. Now the second type of forces, the forces between the molecules, are actually molecules, forces called van der Waals forces. And van der Waals forces are incredibly important. Okay, and we will speak about them more in this lesson and then even more in the next couple of lessons. So van der Waals forces are very important, but we first need to learn a little bit more about both types. So let's have a look at this. So, here is a whole depiction of all the different types of forces you can get. So the first one is an ion dipole. In other words, this here is an atom that's lost an electron, it's become a positive ion, so it's a cation. And this is a molecule that already has a slightly negative and a slightly positive end. Okay, so what happens is the slightly negative end is attracted to the positive cation and this becomes an ion dipole force. Please note that these molecules do not bond, they're just allowed to come closer to each other. Okay, the second type of ion molecule force we get is an ion induced dipole. An ion induced dipole. What happens is you've got a molecule which is neutral, totally neutral. Okay, right. And yet comes along this big positive cation. Okay, and what happens is all the little negative electrons go, oh look, there's a big positive cation and they get attracted across to the positive cation and what happens is you have an induced dipole. Induced dipole means that it's a very temporary, very temporary, ridiculously temporary and we made it. We made it. And, well, we didn't but the positive cation did. It caused this neutral molecule to act like a, like a dipole. A dipole remember means it's got two ends, di, two and pole and this side here is going to be slightly negative and this is slightly positive but only because these electrons have been attracted to this. So you have suddenly the slightly negative and slightly positive end and these slightly negative end is going to be attracted to it. So it actually looks in the end like an iron dipole but it is even more temporary than this one. Okay, and what happens is, is that while these electrons are on this side, they get attracted to each other, but obviously these electrons are still orbiting around the molecule and they're going to move apart and then, then these are going to move apart again. Right, so those are the two types of iron molecule forces you get. Let's now look at another type. This is a dipole dipole. So this is two molecules. Both of them are dipole. Okay, right? So what happens is that the slightly positive side, remember slightly positive, 
is going to be attracted to the slightly negative end, okay? But remember that forces can act in 360 degrees, okay? So it doesn't have to form these long chains like this. They could also lie like that, where the slightly positive end is close to the slightly negative, and the slightly negative is close to the slightly positive. But please remember, there's no bonding that actually occurs. All that these forces do is allow these molecules to get closer and to lie next to each other very temporarily like this, okay, and that actually is a lower energy state, and that's important, we'll talk about that, why that is important later. Okay, the next one is a dipole-induced dipole, okay, so this time we've got a dipole, here it is, and we actually have a neutral, a neutral molecule, okay, right, a neutral molecule, and the neutral molecule, again, the, what happens is this neutral molecule comes close to the dipole, it sees the negative, the slightly negative end of this dipole. And all the electrons then get, in this case, get repelled. They go, oh, no, I don't want to be near the negative end. So they go, wee, all the way to this side. So then what happens? We end up with a slightly positive end on this side of the neutral molecule and a slightly negative end. And again, there is a force of attraction, okay, between them. So that's dipole-induced dipole, okay, so you have a dipole near a neutral, pushes the electrons away or attracts them if it was the other way around, and forms a dipole-induced dipole bond. Right, last type. These are momentary dipoles. This is when you have a neutral atom, this is a neutral atom, and you have another neutral neutral atom, okay? And what happens is, it just happens to be that as the electrons are rotating, going around the orbits and they're rotating around the nucleus, okay, revolving around the nucleus, that what happens is that basically the, the instantaneous, a very quick moment, that's why they call it momentary, it's very quick, where the electrons happen to be on this side of this atom and they happen to be on this side of this atom which means the electrons suddenly see this big positive proton in the middle okay the big positive nucleus so what happens is for an instant this is what it looks like this looks this one here looks like it is slightly negative on that side and slightly positive on this side and the second one here looks very temporarily like this is slightly negative and this is slightly positive. So what will happen is we'll have a very temporary force of attraction between them. But remember these electrons are keep going around. So if these electrons are going around this way and these electrons are, say for example, going this way, what's going to happen? Suddenly the electrons are going to be here and these electrons are going to be here and there's going to be no force of attraction between them. So it's very, very, very temporary. Now, the last three. In other words, your dipole dipole, your dipole induced dipole, and your momentary dipoles. These are van der Waals forces, okay? Van der Waals forces, and we're gonna do a couple more lessons just specifically on these. The first two are not van der Waals forces, so when you've got ions in them, they are not van der Waals forces. Okay, cool. Now, examples. So let's look at an example of an ion dipole force. Typically, it would be sodium chloride in water. And this is the picture. What happens is the sodium chloride breaks up into Na plus ions plus Cl minus ions in your water. That's what it does. And your water molecule, if you look carefully here, you can see that this is an oxygen. There's a hydrogen and there's a hydrogen. So what happens is you've got oxygen. It's like Mickey Mouse ears. In this case, it's just upside down. Okay, well, this is going to be slightly negative. This is going to be slightly positive, And this is going to be slightly positive. So what happens is when a water molecule comes on from this side and the, sees a chloride ion, it's going to be attracted. The negative chloride ion is going to be attracted to the positive ends of the water molecules, right? There you go. And the negative, I mean the positive sodium ion is going to be attracted to the negative oxygen. So that's actually how, what happens when you're dissolving your salt in your water. The salt actually is 
gets around it. The sodium gets around it by water molecules and the chloride gets around it by water molecules but they face in opposite directions because of these differences in charge. Okay, so that's iron dipole forces. And finally, let's look at an example of iron induced dipole forces. So yeah, you've got, and again, I'm just going to give you a random example. You've got a spherical atom which is no dipole. Okay, suddenly you've got a big positive cation which comes close. What happens is it attracts the electrons to this side, so this side becomes slightly negative, which means this is obviously slightly positive because it's lost its electrons. Okay, or it hasn't lost them, they've just moved over here. So therefore this is an iron induced dipole because now suddenly this looks slightly negative and that is slightly positive. And that grade 11 is your basic introduction to intermolecular forces. Please, please, please make sure you understand this and you understand the difference between your intra and intermolecular, your intramolecular bonds and your intermolecular forces, and which ones are van der Waals forces, I mean, and which are not, yeah. And we will do more lessons this week specifically on the different types of van der Waals forces. Have a great day.